Hello, Snugglebugs. Welcome to today's uh, Hearthstone card review. We're going over the Whizbangs Workshop Shimity Shaman with the Shaman Shake cards. And up first, we have uh, a relatively big one, or at least expensive one ish, for Elemental Shimity Shaman, which is Taunt and Elusive, which is Elusive. I would say it's a new keyword, but really it's bringing in a keyword that people have been kind of asking for, which is it can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. And Battlecry summon a copy of this which means 7 mana, 6, 14 in stats with taunt that also can't be dealt with with spells, so it should, in theory, either have to be a board wipe or done via minions, which is a lot of health. Um, also keep in mention that it doesn't say, like, summon a, a, a sentinel, a shining sentinel, which some cards do because that means that it would summon a 3-7 no matter what. Um, being that this summons a copy of this means if you do have any ways to buff it in your hand or something to do with elemental um, buffs or anything like that, uh, say you double this with the Therizin um, Death Rattle from previous, uh, like the last ex mini set or expansion, um, all of a sudden this becomes, you know, that's doubled. Each one of these would be 614, which means that it would be uh, 1228 with with Taunt and, and the elusive keyword and all that kind of stuff. So I feel like even though it actually seems kind of expensive, I feel like this is going to be a really good high-end uh, card within a Battle Cry Elemental Shamity Shaman. Um, so yeah, I think this is going to be really good in the right decks, and honestly, even the 614 stats with all those effects is just pretty strong in general if the game is, like, I would say slow enough to get to 7. So yeah. Uh, next up, we have a 6-mana spell called Once Upon a Time, uh, and it is summon a random 3-cost Beast, Dragon, Elemental, and Murloc. So I have sort of a weird uh, mixed, I guess, feeling about this one, I would say. And that's, like, Six mana, when you summon a bunch of low-cost things and all that kind of stuff, it, it seems not great. Um, you don't know what you're going to get. You know, there's a lot of... Up front, there might be a lot of really bad three-cost things, you know, especially if, like, they're different varied tribes, which we haven't really seen too much of, like, Menagerie and Shaman. Uh, I keep trying to say Shimmy Shaman, but I won't say that a million times uh, in one video. But at the same time... It's 12 mana worth of stats for 6. Now, mind you, a lot of 3, 2, 3, 4 cost minions are usually valued on battle cries, so you got to note these also won't get those battle cry effects or anything like that. But um, I feel like this, this could be good. I feel the issue is maybe in like a Highlander Shaman deck, you'd want to run one of these just to kind of refill your board. You know, maybe you do a Shroomscavate on anyone that lasts or... If you're playing a deck with Bloodlust, like, board fills are just pretty good. So I don't think it's terrible, but I just, I don't, for six, and you don't know what you're going to get, and it doesn't have any immediate impact on board unless you get, like, a rush, charge, taunt, etc. Just, I don't know. We'll have to wait and we'll see what the pool looks like to see if this is actually worth it. But as of right now, I actually don't feel super highly on this card, even though it summons a lot of mana worth for six. And then next up, we do have, I, I would assume, the follow-up to that, which is Wish Upon a Star, which is a 7-mana give 2 plus 3 to all minions in your hand deck and battlefield. So, yeah, you play that on 6, you get 4 minions if they don't deal with them for whatever reason, because they're like, oh, these are just little minions, I don't want to spend a bunch of time dealing with it. Next turn, you would have plus 8, plus 12 on the board, plus just forever buffs in your hand. Now... Personally, I think a card like Wish Upon a Star goes better in a almost all minion-based deck. So when you play this, you buff your six-cost card instead of banking on um, a spell that summons a bunch. Like, if you had a two- or three-mana spell that summoned a bunch of one-ones that could be played the same turn as this, I could see that being a good combo. But as a standalone card, I guess to come back to it, Wish Upon a Star, I actually think is going to be quite good. It's a little slow... And it says we're at seven mana, technically do nothing on the board unless you have minions. However, as we'll see, there are some big spell synergy um, coming, which again, I guess this could be why Wish Upon a Star, the other um, one we were just looking at, could be good as well. Uh, but I just think this one has better potential myself. Next up, we have the location for Shaman, or I'm not saying the as in everyone's getting one, I guess, but a location for Shaman called Fairy Tail Forest, and it is draw a battle cry minion, and it costs one less. So basically, for three mana, over several turns, you get two draw and two mana discount. Now, again, let's look at this with even the battle cry we just saw. 
it turns that 3-7 into a 6 cost, which um, admittedly is amazing. And we're going to see, uh, we'll say, a little spoiler, a legendary here in a bit, or two at least, uh, that have battle cry. So we're going to have some either elemental battle cry, big spell, shaman, that's kind of the package, not all elementals, but that's kind of what you're going for is like big spell, battle cry, shaman here, I think. And honestly, like I said, just three mana draw two, plus it's targeted two with a mana discount. This is probably going to be played in almost every shaman deck. Like, this is just me. This is like a, again, I don't typically do star ratings. I won't put them on the, the screen here, but if I did, I think this would be a five star location, which we don't have too many of those, admittedly. So look out for this one. Next up, we have the Baking Soda Volcano which is just a mini, uh, for those who remember, there was an old card for Shaman, I think just called Volcano. Um, anyway, we don't need to, I guess, go over that, but this is just a smaller version, four mana. Fits the theme of the set of kind of like a playful party type thing, uh, and I believe the old Volcano did not have Lifesteal. I could be wrong there, but uh, Lifesteal deal 10 damage split among enemy, or split among all minions, which again, old Volcano did, and Overload 1. So effectively, let's say deal 10 damage. I'm sure you'd use this mostly when your opponent has a bunch of stuff on the board. Um, think anti-aggro. You know, your opponent at, by turn four has three, four minions sometimes, but they all have one or two health. This card would not only wipe their board, in theory, or at least come close, but heal you by 10. Or, well, heal you by, if they have less than 10, it'll heal you for how much it does. The overload one obviously can kind of be rough sometimes, but I think this is another one of those cards that you might not see necessarily in every deck, just because, you know, like I said, some decks might prefer to run, you know, if you're an aggro, say, Totem Shaman, you probably don't want to run this. You'd rather run a board buff or something. But in any form of tempo, Reno, late game Shaman, I think this is going to find a place. It is also quite a good card. I'm seeing saying that a lot with the Shaman cards today, which is good. I don't think Shaman... Other than there for a while when Totem Shaman was sort of everywhere, Shaman hasn't really been uh, impressive, I guess is the word. And we have the Miniaturize for the Shaman, and it is also an elemental with Battlecry, which means the Miniaturize will go nicely, and it'll go into that Battlecry package I was talking about, which is Battlecry. Give your hero plus one attack and Wind Fury this turn. So if you have a weapon or... You just turn the tides to give yourself attack. You play this, it gives you another attack and wind fury. All of a sudden, you're hitting them for like eight damage to face, which is already something some shaman decks like to try to do is like buff their hero, even play um, wind fury or the, the hammer. Uh, drawing a blank on that, but the big hammer with wind fury just so you can attack twice. This effectively gives you that effect two times in one card because you can also then get a one mana version, which lets you combo it later much easier. And since this is uh, common and not a legendary or whatever, uh, technically means you can do this effect like four times in one game. So yeah, yeah, I can see this actually almost being counter to the Battle Cry late game package, because I feel like this is almost the high end of a potential aggressive shaman. Uh, so that that's that's good. I think this is just good. I mean, four mana, four, four, plus the elemental tag, I think just kind of helps. Um, and the fact it's got the miniaturize for a combo, or even the miniaturize can be good to keep your elemental run going to get Scar out later and those types of things. So honestly, again, I think it's going to do very well. So on the note of uh, strong, uh, mirror image from Mage, from, I, I think it's still in wild only, not in standard, but... Uh, Used to be played in some decks. This is just uh, a lot better than that. Let's be honest. I know the mirror image was 0-2 taunts, but here we have a 1-mana spell called Pop-Up Book. Deal 2 damage, so 1-mana two, 2 damage is already kind of standard. You know, a lot of classes have it in random forms. Shaman already has it in the sense of the 1-mana deal 2 damage dredge card. And then it's also going to summon two zero one one frogs with taunt. So, like... Right off the hop, you're getting minions that, again, if they somehow stay on the board, there's buffs and things like that that you can give them. Uh, worst case scenario, best case scenario, again, you're talking anti-aggro. Could be one mana deal with a minion plus block two attacks, which could just get you up to that small volcano card and things like this. So 
again, I'm just, I hate to keep repeating myself, I guess, but I feel like Shaman got a lot of really powerful cards in this set, and this is definitely one of them. Even for as small as it looks, there's so many things bundled into one mana, and the nature tag as well, I kind of just noticed, could, could go really far. Okay. Uh, and then we have Incredible Value, which is a three mana card that is Discover a four cost minion, but then set its attack and health to seven. So it's kind of a play on, uh, I don't know, I guess for those who've been playing as long as I have, the four mana seven seven almost meme at this point uh, for Shaman, which was uh, one of the first most powerful cards that they released that people thought that, that was kind of broken um, way back when. It was like a four mana seven seven overload three. Uh, which now at the time, Overload was actually kind of a bonus in the Overload deck. There was a lot of like, oh, you played that, but it made it so you buffed another card or you negated the Overload somehow or whatever. Um, so it was actually kind of a good thing in a lot of cases. Plus the 7-7 seven, seven was just strong enough to win games, right? Back then, there wasn't as many removals as there might be today. So this is kind of like a way that you have to spend a card to get a good 4-mana 7-7. Seven, seven, so it's a bit of a drawback like a three mana prepare for next turn but again a four mana seven seven with no drawback hopefully because you get to discover one hopefully you might even discover something that has a really good effect death rattle or battle cry or something right so again in the right deck i could see this being good you have to be careful because three mana effectively do nothing that turn is not necessarily something you're always going to want to or be able to do on turn three right and then, of course, if your aim is to then use the Volcano to clean up on four, well, you're not really getting the value of the four-cost minion um, when you need it, right? But honestly, overall, I think this is, compared to the other cards, probably more middle of the road. But uh, again, because there's, depending on what four-cost cards are in the pool, could be a, could be a game-swinging card, in theory. All right, so then we have our first Legendary of the set. I, I saved them both for last in this one because they're kind of interesting. Um, and yeah, I just, uh, that was just the way I kind of wanted to do it. So we have Hegatha the Fabled, which is five mana, four, four, and battle cry. Draw two spells that cost five or more. So we've looked at a few. There's more we didn't look at, but from the set. And then you transform them into slimes, these little fairy tale slimes here, um, that have, that cast a spell. So, um, I don't think, they're not one mana, one ones always that cast the spell. I believe the way this is supposed to work is if it draws a 7-mana card, it becomes a 7-mana 7-7 seven, seven battle cry, cast the spell. So I know that almost seems weird, but effectively it's draw two spells, which is pretty good, right? Anyway, 5-mana 4-4, four, four, draw two. It's not terrible, right? I think we've seen similar effects on 5-mana five 5-5s five, five, or something like that before, but they're tutored into spells, and they actually give you extra benefit. So, you know, you get that card we're looking at where it buffs everything by plus 2, plus 3, you're now attaching that to a minion with battle cry uh, so you get to play it effectively buff itself and for seven mana all of a sudden you have a, a board buff and a nine ten right and then of course we'll get into another reason the battle cries are good because if you um had some nightmares about shutter walk in the past if you've played and went back when battle cry shaman was really all over the place welcome to shutter block little uh, lego shutter walk type thing which has miniaturized, so again, you get to effectively do this twice. Battle cry. Your next battle cry triggers three times, but can't damage the enemy hero. So, again, luckily they added the can't damage the enemy hero, so they're trying to get around um, OTKs and things of that nature. I'm sure someone will still somehow find one where, you know, you, at least in wild, because you could do some kind of crazy shenanigans and then give your opponent the minion that when it takes damage, your hero takes damage. But at least in standard shouldn't be a way to directly kill your opponent with this um however my thought is you know you use miniaturize your next battle cry triggers three times into uh say that minion we just talked about that's now a seven mana seven seven that buffs everything all of a sudden that seven mana seven seven that buffs everything by plus six plus nine right uh and then you also get the miniaturized version so it's just a one mana one one which means you can play that with another battle cry three times now, I will say, because of the way they did this, where it says your next battle cry triggers three times, not an additional three times or whatever, the miniaturized version, you can't like play this into the miniaturized version, have the miniaturized version go off three times and effectively do the third battle cry, you know, nine times. So it doesn't, it doesn't uh, stack. 
So at least they also, again, kind of thought of that aspect of this card. But again, I think there's going to be some intense moments you can do. Like I said, my initial thought was use your Hagatha to get a Wish Upon a Star. Get your next battle cry goes three times. You play this, all of a sudden, like I said, your 7 7 becomes a 7 7. That buffs by 6 plus 9. And then maybe you actually drew both two Wish Upon Stars. So your one mana one goes on turn eight with one mana miniaturized into the second Wish Upon a Star slime. And you just have these massive walls of things like your Shining Sentinel that now some would at that point summon, what would that be, like 15, 30 walls or you could even just double this once and play the shutter block into making three of these or four of these and be an unstoppable wall uh i could see that being where we're kind of going with it and then using like early spells to control it and i think shaman uh, i'm kind of thinking shaman's gonna be good in the next set let me know let me know what your thoughts are and uh i'll see you in the next one